Hi guys, I'm Mrs. Tinker. I know a lot of us already know each other, but for those of you that I haven't had the opportunity to meet, I'm Andrew and Anastasia's mom, and I'm so excited to get to be your mystery reader today. So the book we're going to read is a new book. It's called Sophia Valdez, Future Prez. Some of you might have read some of the Imagineers by Andrea Beatty, and this is her new book. So let's jump in. Sophia was a baby who got things done, helping her family before she turned one. She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around Blue River Creek, who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather were stuck home alone. Raking the leaves, taking pets for a walk, or just dropping by for a treat and a talk. Sophia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter. Most people like good, but Sophia liked better. Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophie to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass. Making plans, munching cookies, Abuelo and girl. Except for that Tuesday when Pup saw the squirrel. With a howl, Pup took off, racing all through the town. Over, under, beneath, all around. Sophia scrambled to try to keep up with the hollering man and the bellowing Pup. Uh-oh. Up the squirrel ran to the top of a hill made of leftover junk from the local landfill. They reached the tip top of that mountain of trash which jiggled and broke with an ear-splitting crash. Down they all tumbled and hit with a thud on a moldy old pumpkin surrounded by mud. Ouch, cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping her hand. The next day, Sophia walked to school solo, but it wasn't the same without her Abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sophia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea. The very next morning at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled and Pup gave a bark. Get rid of Mount Trashmore. Let's build a new park. Each of her neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play. Meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond and a kiosk for cheese. She drew every thought on her map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter till dark. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then, bam, she woke up when a thought smacked her head. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. They all thought Sophia could build it alone. But how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache as night thunder growled and she lay wide awake. Then dawn brought a storm and the gloomy sky wept and the heartsick Sophia finally slept. Abuelo booked cookies when Sophie got up. He gave her a bag full and sneaked one to pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged his Sophia. For courage, he whispered, te amo mi vida. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. Ooh, wow, that is a big city hall, isn't it? And look at that beautiful library. Here she goes. 
The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek Department of Fun, which sent her downstairs to room 302, the office of duck ponds and cool things to do, to the office of monkeys, the department of cheese, the division of fountains and beatings and bees, then down to the basement so musty and cramped, where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a park. You're only one kid. The word smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was kiboshed before it could start. I think, said Sophia, I think that law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, clearly it cannot be done. Do you have any questions? Sophia said, one, if you were me and if I was you and he was your grandpa, what would you do? I, well, mm, said the clerk. Then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought, then she sent out a call to every employee throughout City Hall. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak, but her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer. Sophia leaned back. Then her arm brushed the edge of the old cookie sack. And that was the moment when Sophia first knew. Being brave means doing the thing you must do. Though your heart cracks with fear, though you're just in grade two. She took a deep breath, looked the mayor in the eye, and though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. Sophia started talking. She spelled out her plan and why it all mattered and how it began. And once she got rolling, she had lots to say about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play and other ideas for things they could do to help the town elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps a way to combine the two. And all right, cried the mayor, go start a petition. If the town wants a new park, we'll form a commission. And so young Fo Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pup and even the clerk. Wow, look at all those people helping out. Then others joined in, not all but a few, like Miss Lila Greer and the other kids in grade two. There were hearings and surveys and taxes to figure, then bulldozers, cranes, and a blue bigger digger. They all built that park, that's how it got done with the hard work of, by, and for everyone. But it began with the dream of one person, just one, who laced up her shoes and then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now every evening till long after dark, the town comes together at Citizens Park. They all hold this truth to be self-evident that Sofia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sophia, that real life go-getter, helps Blue River Creek get better and better. And one of my favorite parts of this book is when the author says, this book is dedicated to you. You are braver than you know and mightier than you can ever imagine. Be bold. I love the story of Sophia Valdez because it reminds us that every single one of us can help make the world a better place. How will you be brave today? I've got one more book I would like to read you. It's one of my favorites and it's also one of Anastasia and Andrew and Alexander's favorites. It's called Malala's Magic Pencil and it's written by the youngest Nobel Peace Prize winner ever. Her name is Malala Yousafzai. Let's 
get to the first page. Do you believe in magic? When I was younger, I used to watch a TV show about a boy who had a magic pencil. If he was hungry, he drew a bowl of curry and it appeared. If he and his friends were in danger, he drew a police officer. The boy was a little hero, always protecting people who needed his help. Oh, how I wanted a magic pencil too. If I had a magic pencil, I would use it to put a lock on my door so my brothers couldn't bother me, stop time so I could sleep an extra hour every morning, erase the smell of the trash dump near our house, and I would use it to make other people happy. I would draw the most beautiful dresses in the world for my mother, the best buildings in the valley for my father, so he could open many schools where children would study for free. A proper ball so my brothers and I no longer had to play with an old sock stuffed with rubbish. Every night before I went to bed, I wished for a magic pencil of my own. And every morning I would wake up and check my cupboard, but the magic pencil was never there. One day I was throwing away potato peels and eggshells at the dump. I was wrinkling my nose, swatting away flies and making sure I didn't step on anything dirty in my nice shoes. When I saw a girl about my age sorting trash into piles. Nearby, boys were fishing for metal scraps using magnets on strings. When my father returned home from school, I told him what I'd seen. It made him sad. Abba, I said. Yes, John, he said back. I always like when he called me dear one. Why haven't I seen that girl in my class? Because, he said, but he didn't finish right away. Because, Johnny, in our country, not everyone sends their daughters to school and some children must work to support their family. Those boys will sell the metal scraps that they find. If they went to school, their families would go hungry. School was my favorite place. I had never considered myself lucky to be able to go. My father had always said, Malala will live free as a bird. Now I wondered how free I would truly be. That night I thought about families who didn't have enough food and the girl who couldn't go to school and even about how when I was older, I would be expected to cook and clean for my brothers because where I came from, many girls weren't allowed to become what they dreamed of. I knew that if I had the magic pencil, I would use it to draw a better world, a peaceful world. First, I would erase war, poverty, and hunger. Then I would draw girls and boys together as equals. Over the next few years, instead of wishing for a magic pencil every night, I worked hard in school every day. I wanted to be one of the top students in my class. But soon, powerful and dangerous men declared that girls were forbidden from attending school. They walked the streets of our city now and they carried weapons. One by one, girls stopped coming to school. Abba, where are all the students? They don't feel safe here anymore, Johnny. How could a few men stop all the girls in our valley from going to school. If more people knew what was happening to us, I thought, they might help. Wishing wasn't enough. Someone needed to speak out. 
Well, why not me? I wrote about what it felt like to be scared to walk to school and how some of my friends had moved away because of the threat they faced in our city. I wrote about how much I loved school and how proud I was of my uniform. Once I started writing, I didn't stop. I wrote speeches and traveled around my country sharing my story. I even talked to a reporter from a famous international newspaper. People actually wanted to learn about my life. I spoke for all the girls in my valley who couldn't speak for themselves. My voice became so powerful that the dangerous men tried to silence me, but they failed. And now my voice is louder than ever, louder because people have joined me. And together we make a chorus standing up for what we believe. We raise our voices for those in need. We help people in danger, even if they are an ocean away. And we think of the world as a family. Do you still believe in magic? I do. I wrote alone in my room, but people all over the world were reading my story. Millions now know it and help me spread my message of hope. I had at last found the magic I was looking for in my own words and in my work. I am Malala. I've always wished I could make the world a more peaceful place. And every day I work to make my wish come true. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. That is based on the true story of Malala. And she is so inspiring to me because she stands up for what she believes in. This is a picture of the real Malala. Thank you for letting me spend time with you. I can't wait to see you sometime soon. Be kind to each other and remember, be brave.